Uh, Michael Flynn was frog marched in, gave a plea to lying to an FBI agent. No one believes that is the totality of the infractions that Robert Mueller has found uh, in regards to Michael Flynn and criminal activity. And so it has created an enormous amount of speculation that uh, Flynn is working with Mueller and uh, may have been wearing a wire at one point. There were reports last weekend of uh, White House officials. Everybody's afraid. I don't know if they're going around frisking everybody they have a conversation with. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump freaked out. Uh, tweeted out over the weekend. And, you know, I got to hand it to you, Digby. Uh, last week, you had said, like, Donald Trump seems really on edge. <laughs> and uh, he may <laughs> have known what was coming. Uh, but Donald Trump freaks out over the weekend, tweets out something that uh, appears to admit that he um, was aware that Michael Flynn was lying to FBI agents. That uh, you're not supposed to know that if um, if you don't want to get in trouble with the FBI, that someone is uh, your underling is lying to the FBI agents. And some people speculate, well, maybe he knew not just because Flynn came back and said, incidentally, I lied to the FBI agents. Maybe he knew because he suggested that Michael Flynn did it. We don't know. But um, with that said, uh, the Trump uh, people said that it was actually his lawyer who wrote that tweet, which is yeah, right. um, hard to believe, but also maybe more damaging. I mean, in other words, uh, your professional representation actually thought about that and admitted it. Um, nevertheless, uh, we also saw... At the beginning of the week, Robert Mueller had uh, reports that he had subpoenaed bank records from Deutsche Bank, which was the bank that the Trump uh, organization and family had been using. Um, this this keeps uh, 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 piling up. And you, you wrote a piece um, about what Flynn told uh, the uh, Russian ambassador Kislyak. This is what uh, Flynn lied about. But I mean, what? So so what's the deal here? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I, there there's an you know a tremendous amount of evidence piling up that um, that Flynn and the, basically the entire uh, senior team, not necessarily including Trump, but it's hard to believe he wasn't included in this group, knew that Flynn was talking to the Russians about lifting the sanctions that Barack Obama had imposed for the interference in the election. That K.T. McFarlane, who had been uh, Flynn's second-in-command, um, and now she is supposedly going, she was let go as well and she was nominated to be the ambassador to Singapore, which is now on hold because it turns out that she was involved with, with Flynn in the decision to uh, tell, to call up the Russian ambassador during the transition, and tell him that not, not to worry that the sanctions were, you know, were not going to hold. They were going to lift them as soon as they got in and to hold tight and not do anything about it. Now, that is, to me, forget, you know, the, the Republicans are all making the, the, the case that, well, they had a perfect right to talk to the Russian ambassador, the Logan Act, which is the ancient, uh, you know, law that says that you can't uh, do foreign policy as a private citizen, uh, you know, aside from the legalities of this, I just want people to, to think about the fact that the Obama administration, uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, with evidence compiled from the entire United States intelligence community, the FBI, the CIA, NSA, everybody, did an assessment that the Russians had, had infiltrated, had attempted to infiltrate the Trump campaign and had conducted this hacking and had interfered in the election, whether it was to sow discord or do whatever, and that they had also concluded that this was to the benefit of Donald Trump. Whether or not Donald Trump knew about it, we don't know that yet. We don't have that evidence. But the fact is that it happened. And, you know, people can argue about that, but that's ridiculous. We know it happened. We know it from the Facebook stuff. We know all that. At the time that that evidence was there, Donald Trump knew about it, his entire senior team knew about it, they decided that they would tell the Russians that the punishment that was being inflicted on them for the interference in the election, not to worry about it, but they were going to take care of them when they got into office. That alone, regardless of whether it's legal, was a betrayal of the United States of America. Basically, 
Donald Trump and his henchmen told the Russian government, no biggie, fine that you interfered in the election, we'll take care of you, there won't be any price to pay for that. I find that astonishing. Now, is there a law against them rewarding the Russian government for helping them get elected? I don't know. But there should be, because it's a betrayal of the United States of America. It just Well, it is. certainly suggests, I mean, when people talk about moral hazards, I mean, if that's oh okay, wh- where's the disincentive for people to do that in the future? There's none. And in fact, it's basically saying, have at it and, you know, come on in, help us get elected again, which, you know, I've always suspected was actually what these people think. There's a reason why the Republicans don't care that the Russians helped Donald Trump and, by the way, may have actually helped some of the the Republicans in the House, too. You know, the DCCC was hacked as well. And that information was used by Republican uh, candidates in the election to help them get elected. So, you know, there was a benefit to Republicans across the board, and apparently they're happy about it, see no problem with it, and have no problem uh, allowing the Russians to do it again. They certainly seem in no hurry to put in place any kind of safeguards against it happening again. They're fine with it. Now, uh, you know, why they are so sure that this is always gonna, going to work to their benefit, I don't know, but they certainly seem to be. And I find that absolutely astonishing and you know I, I don't know whether you know Mueller is conducting a criminal prosecution investigation he's trying to determine whether or not there was a quid pro quo and he's seen you know this this going for the the Deutsche Bank records and all that certainly implies that he is following the rubles on this um, and and that could be I've always suspected that was really where Trump's vulnerability was more than you know the compromise tapes or whatever, that there's, there's financial exposure right. uh, for him. So, you know, him following that, that may be where we find some kind of criminal liability and the obstruction of justice stuff, well, it's obvious, right? I mean, Trump went on Lester Holt and admitted it, and then basically went on Twitter last weekend and admitted it again, <laughs> that he was interfering in the investigation, which is, you know, what we legal term is obstruction of justice. So that, that, that inquiry is, is carrying along as well. But just the basic idea that a presidential uh, campaign and, you know, a presidential transition and White House would basically say that it's fine if a foreign government interferes in our election. We don't have a problem with it. It helped us out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vlad. We've got your back. I'm I'm still just stunned that that happened and that nobody cares. (laughs) I mean, nobody on the right cares. Uh, You know, I certainly... You know, they are going to have to answer historically for this in a way that I don't think they understand that just how stunning it is what they've done. They betrayed their country. They did. I don't know if, you know, it's not treason. We're not against, we're not at war with Russia. Right. But that doesn't mean they didn't betray their country. They did. They betrayed it. And and they're proud of it, apparently. Well, and, uh, you know, there was a report from the Times this uh, week that uh, Flynn... Um, uh, reportedly thought that the the repeal of sanctions would also help a business project that he was yep. uh, working on. So, uh, to be fair, um, they also had a, an enormous amount of uh, financial gain to gain from this too. So it's not just about uh, the 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 uh, the incentive structure is wide. Um, all right, <laughs> we got to take a quick break, um, Heather. When we come back, we will talk about uh, well, Al Franken. We'll be right back. Okay. 